Beth Fukumoto, uh, co-chair of the Hawaii Future Caucus, and I'm here with co-chairs Representative Takashi Ono and City Council Member Stanley Chang, as well as members that are here today, Representative Johansson, Lee, and Ng. Um, we have a number of other members, most of the members in the House that are under 40, and they're all listed in the press releases that are on the table. Um, everybody here brings a very different background and a diverse set of perspectives, sometimes very diverse and very different. Um, but we all share an interest in making sure that young people are interested in the process and want to participate. Um, Takashi and Stanley are going to go into more detail, uh, but to give you an overview, we've formed this caucus to look at different ways that we can provide common sense solutions and, and more, be more pragmatic about the way we approach policy as young people. So the caucus membership is comprised of local elected officials under 40 at the city, uh, county, and state levels. Um, and they're both Republicans and Democrats. So we are looking at building a bipartisan effort to engage young people. We are also going to be looking at building an advisory council that's going to include, besides elected officials, it would include people in the nonprofit sector, lobbyists, people in the business sector, who are interested in also looking at different ways that we can provide policies that will work for everyone. The national connection here, Tulsi Gabbard, um, the Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard worked with Congressman Aaron Schock on the national level to build a congressional caucus. And they worked with the same organization that we're working with, which is the Millennial Action Project. And what they're doing is they're going across the country trying to build um, and, and try to, trying to facilitate discussion amongst elected officials under 40. And their opinion is that we need to start looking at postpartisan solutions and ways to be more pragmatic in the way we approach things and less dogmatic. Um, and they have been working with a variety of other elected officials on different, in different levels of government. And we are going to join with them, as well as Congresswoman Gabbard, in trying to do some things here locally that will help promote common sense ideas. So. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Representative Ono, who's going to talk a little bit about why we think this is important. Thanks, Representative Fukumoto. I want to talk a little about why we decided to go forward with this project. Um, you know, it's undoubtedly, it, it's, it's, I think all young folks um, feel a little frustrated and disengaged with the process they see across the country in our politics. The extreme polarization that we see in Congress doesn't help. And in fact, a 2013 Harvard study points that almost half of 18 to 29 year olds feel that politics today no longer are able to meet the challenges our country is facing. And another third of those young people are just simply apathetic. Um, we've seen voter participation rates for young people drop also in the past two years. But things like voter participation, things like government accessibility and transparency, those are issues that aren't exclusive to one party, and that's why we're here today as a bipartisan group to address those. Well, we want to make young people feel like this building is their home just as much as it is to their parents or their grandparents. We want to make sure that they feel this place is accessible and appealing, that they come in, and with their help, we feel that we can make this place a better place. Um, I want to also quickly highlight that um, a lot of those young people feel that solutions need answers regardless of where you come from, regardless of where you sit on the aisle, um, that those solutions need answers. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Councilmember Stanley Chang, who will talk a little more in depth about what our policy, what our priorities will be. Thank you, um, Representative Ono. As Representatives Ono and Fukumoto mentioned, there's a huge barrier today to all people, especially young people, getting involved in government. Today, over half of all non-voters in Hawaii, the state with the lowest voter participation rate in the country, are under the age of 35. Only 30% of folks under the age of 35 do vote. So frankly, most of our friends, most of our peers of our same age don't vote. And the reason why is simply because it's really hard to get involved. And that's why we're focused on making government easier to engage with for young people and for all people. The two issues that we're focusing on today and as a caucus are going to be transparency in government and increased voter participation. And we've been brainstorming a number of different ideas that we'll mention in just a little bit. The important thing to know is that these are not democratic ideas. 
They're not Republican ideas. They're common sense ideas. And that's why we have a bipartisan caucus to push these ideas forward. So on the issue of transparency, um, not all of the hearings that are here, that are taking place here at the state capitol are broadcast either on Olelo or on the web. That's one possible idea to help make government more transparent and accessible. There's only 48 hour notice given in many cases for hearings that take place here. And people are busy, especially young people. So that doesn't give a lot of time to, um, for them to clear their schedule so they can participate either through oral or written testimony, making their views known. Those are just a couple of ideas on the transparency side. On the voter participation side, some other ideas that are just possible brainstorm ideas. Um, we've talked about having a greater number of early voting polling places instead of just three on this island so that people, regardless of where they are in the community, are going to be able to you know, go to a polling place that's in their own community over an extended period of time if they're busy on election day. We've also talked about ways to increase the voter registration for young people by um, reaching out to them and making it easier for them to register and making it less difficult. Um, the bottom line here is that we hope to bring in a new generation of people into the political process, young people and people of all ages who just want to get things done, who don't care about party lines, who don't care whose fault and whose blame it is, but really want everybody, especially elected officials, to work together to bring post-partisan solutions to the problems that have divided us and that have um, so polarized our community. So with that, that's the end of our formal prepared section of this press conference. We're happy to take questions from anyone in the audience. This is an idea that um, I think all of us have talked about over the past year. Um, with the foundation of the Congressional Future Caucus by Representatives Gabbard and Schock, we really felt that that was a great model for us to adopt here at the state level. And that's why we're doing this as a bipartisan caucus at the legislative level. But also, we wanted to bring the counties um, involved, too, because Frankly, both transparency and voter participation, they're not just state issues. They're also county level issues too. And so that's another barrier that we're working to, um, to, to, to cross, to bridge. So all the people listed on the news release, that's the full number? Any idea how many you have? Uh, I wanna say it's about 11. 11? Yeah. Right. 14, hey, we got more. <laughs> you know, one of the big issues that are gonna come up during the next legislative session is it will be GMOs. Have you developed a position on that? <laughs> this is our first meeting today, so not yet. <laughs> any positions on any issue? We are still, we're still in discussions about it. Like, like, like Stanley mentioned, we are talking about um, different ways to increase voter participation and improve government transparency, things like better notice and that sort of thing. We can kind of all agree we need. Um, but no, not, nothing specific. We're actually going to discuss that afterwards today. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> In general, though, the millennials are collaborative, right? I mean, isn't that the stereotype? I think I can speak for all of us that we all have a great working relationship, that we all respect and listen to each other, and look forward to collaborating in the future, regardless of, again, what side of the aisle you are on. So it'll be very collegial and very nice, as opposed to the... <laughs> politics that I grew up with, which was a, a blood sport. I certainly hope so. That's the idea. <laughs> Do you plan on presenting a package of legislation that you want? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're an official caucus with the House, so we'll be able to put in a, a package, a caucus package. Yeah. Is this the first time something like this has happened? As far as I know. Here in the state, yeah. right, again, modeled after something in Congress. Um, and just to add to the legislative package, with the work with the other folks here um, and the advisory council, um, that package will be developed over the next couple months before the session starts in January. And we'd also actually like a complementary package of measures to be moving forward at the county level too. A lot of these initiatives, I think, are applicable at the county level, such as um, hearings um, being broadcast on the web, such as the number of polling places. And so we see it as a real opportunity for the state and the counties to work together also. And your generation is more attuned to social media than uh, the regular media, so 
Oh. That's right. We're on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Hawaii Future Caucus. Oh, okay. So Wayne, I better see you liking our page. 